I tried to make this one episode and we'll come back and we'll do a, a second one. People really seem to like the first one. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I try to keep these things 20 minutes. I found myself at a half an hour with an hour more to talk about. Um, and we did our recap. And by now you've probably seen a whole bunch of videos out there about, uh, you know, fan fast fanatics, what people thought, what people liked, what people didn't. Um, an interesting thing that I haven't really seen too many people talk about and what I, I think I'm uniquely situated, one of a handful of people that actually went to uh, two events this weekend. Uh, a lot of people realize that the uh, East Coast National was also this weekend, the biggest, uh, the biggest show in New York during the year, um, put on by part of the team that runs the actual national itself. Um, they do a lot of local shows here. Some of them are 10, 15 minutes away from my house. This one's about an hour ride maybe a 40 minute train ride from the, you know, from the, from the city, from where FanFest was going on. Um, and it's, it's a fun question. And kind of what I, what I hope to do here in this episode is, is, is two parts. Number one, continue to talk about FanFest, but more specifically, is it something that is sustainable? Um, is it a once a year type of thing like the national, the sustainability of that, but you know, is it, is it something they can really just start rolling out every couple of months? It's an interesting thing, right? I mean, what makes San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, you know, twice a year things, some of the other ones don't do as big a deal. Um, you know, what makes the National awesome is that, yeah, while there's Dallas shows every now and again, and while there's the Burbank show, the National is the National. Like, that becomes the event. That becomes the thing people travel to. And the other part of the episode, and what I'll start off with, is coexisting. I titled this episode, you know, the Fan Fest Experience Part 2, just because it's a continuation of, you know, the same episode segment. But in reality, I'd like to title it, Can't Both of Them Win? And let's just run with that for a second, right? Because the biggest question that should be posed out there is, does the success of a Fanatics Fest, an event run by Fanatics, does it necessarily mean that somebody else has to lose or can they both win? And a lot of folks are, are not just talking about the East Coast National, but, you know, I'll, I'll draw the comparison, but, but talking about the National itself and saying, you know, is, is the success of, of FanFest or success of, um, you know, the, the event that we're seeing, is that, you know, the first nail in the coffin for the National? I'm going to tell you the answer to that is no. It's a definite no. And I expect no matter how many fan fests you see from now until the next year's national, whether there's a November Orlando and there's an LA one coming up and they do Pittsburgh or they do wherever, Chicago's national next year will set attendance records again. Because the hobby is not going anywhere. I saw a great post using card ladder data by Nat Turner on his Twitter page about the industry. They have sort of like an industry graph. And it's not Michael Jordan's graph. And it's not Penny Hardaway's graph. It's not Ellie Dela Cruz's graph. And it doesn't show you how many boxes of Travis Scott, Cactus Jack got sold. It tells you the hobby. It tells you the sales. It tells you the, you know, basically the auction market, the secondary sales market, the, just the sales and how many hundreds of millions of dollars are transacted and basically the steady nature of it, right? And that there's not a huge decline in climate. Mean, there's, you know, you could even look at it as steady growth or just, a, you know, a, a, a wider spread industry than you may think. It's going to continue to grow. And dare I even say that if Fan Fest, the Fanatics Fest, does what it's supposed to do, maybe over the course of the next year, some people who go to these Fanatics Fests and meander into the card section, start collecting and go to a national next year or the year after or the year after that. Why not? Isn't that the goal? Do they have to be this? Do they have to be butting heads? And flip it the other way. Does the national have to be the beneficiary of FanFest? We think of growing the hobby as, all right, Fanatics is going to bring sport fans in and turn them into card collectors. Why wouldn't Fanatics want to work with the National and a few select larger shows? Have a small presence at those shows. Have a small presence at the National. Have a small presence at 
the um, Dallas show, the Burbank show, culture collision, do a small activation. Work with them and hand out stuff about the next fan fest. Come to this. Oh, you bought wrestling cards? Come to this and meet the Miz. Come to this on November 2nd in Orlando. Come to this. Slurpee, they gave out a little like, hey, you know, enter starting, I think it was August 28th, to win a LA prize. So Orlando, LA, I mean, they're in the works. Is there a reason why fanatics can't also benefit from the success of the national and these other shows? Going head to head, same weekend? That's tough. And you'd like to think that maybe the titans of industry, there's not too many people out there, right? There's, you know, a team that runs the culture collision. You know, you got the national team that also does the Philly show, the CSA show, and the East Coast National. You got the Dallas show. You got the Burbank show. You know, there are a couple more. I'll probably leave it. I'm obviously Costa Cards and, you know, the Cardboard guys, and they do the awesome shows up in, in Boston and, you know, EC3Con and the Mohegan Sun shows. And I, I mean, there's... Even if you wanted to take off your, your shoes and count on fingers and toes, there's a way to coordinate it. There's 52 weeks in the year. And why wouldn't you want to coordinate that? I would have went to FanFest all three days. But East Coast National happened. So I didn't go to FanFest all three days. I went to East Coast National on one day. Why make me choose? You could both get my money. If FanFest was this weekend and East Coast National was next weekend, I'd go to three days one and then three days to the other. I mean, it, it, you. You don't have to fight over the same dollars when we have extra dollars to spend on both. I guess that would be my take. But when they were head-to-head, -head, the East Coast Nationals suffered. Now, I don't know if that would happen the next time. I don't know if that will happen you know, next year if the same event is thrown. There is some, you know, I, like a primacy effect, basically, from, you know, from, from psychology. There is something to be said about it being the first a new thing, an unknown. The people who have been to East Coast National know what it is. You know the signers that are going to be there. You want to see Mike Tyson? You can see him on Saturday at East Coast National, or you can see him on Sunday at FanFest. Is there really that much of a difference? Interesting, right? Same guy. But why compete? Why go head-to-head -head if you don't have to? You go head-to-head, -head, I think you both lose. You know, because there are people who will go to one over the other, and you could have had both. But in this one, I will tell you, I had fun at the East Coast National. There were people there on Saturday, but I guarantee you that it was not as well attended as the Fan Fest, and it was less attended than it otherwise would have been if Fan Fest was another day. Because the Javits Center is not the West Coast, the, the, the White Plains Convention Center in Westchester, Westchester County Center. That's just a big gymnasium. The Javits is huge. It had half of the WWE there. It had YouTubers and, uh, you know, Twitch streamers and leagues and mini soccer pitches and 40-yard dashes and all kinds of craziness. It had Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Ant-Man and KD. And the East Coast National had the same stuff it pretty much always has. So it was going to have a tough time competing, and it did. That said, my son had a blast. He set up, sold some cards. I made a dollar box and sold a bunch of it, gave away a lot more. Um, it's a story for another day, I guess, but I have more fun. I probably had a thousand dollars worth of cards in my box you know all rookies numbered color and i sold about a hundred dollar 180 190 something like that worth i actually put that in my pocket and left with no cards like i was just you want to buy oh they're a dollar each okay six for five how many you got there eight okay he had take another 12 for five dollars you know like he has 20 for five bucks you know, I was trying to, I would ask people, who are you a fan of? Oh, Yankee? Well, here's a stack of Volpe. Here's a stack of Dominguez. Oh, you like basketball? Here's the basketball stack. Take a couple extra. Here's all my Brandon Millers. CJ Stroud? Take them. Less than a buck? Sure. Who cares? Because that's fun. I have fun doing it. 
Um, and my son had fun too. We sold a lot of cards. There's some cool stuff there. There were some cool old vintage cards there, some non-sports stuff. And it, it is a card show. It's a card show and an autograph show. And there's room for both. And people did well at the show. I'm sure that the people who paid for that show were not thrilled that they were competing against FanFest. But they did fine. Not as well as they would have been if not for FanFest. But they can both survive. Is it so hard to ask for a little communication betwixt and between the two? I mean, maybe it is. You know, Burger King and McDonald's probably don't call each other up and say, when are you running a sale so we can run a sale at the same time and compete with you? Or, <laughs> you know, when are you running a sale so that we'll do our sale the week after? You know, you got Beanie Babies this week? Okay, we'll do our uh, our fun promotion the week after. That's why we're not running head-to-head. -head. It's kind of not the way that it works. You'd like to think that in a space like ours where – I think both can succeed, both can win, and they're better off both winning, working with each other, that there'd be some kind of communication, but maybe there isn't. The East Coast National, fun show. Definitely not as crowded. Definitely not. All cards, obviously not the spectacle, not the you know craziness, but more hobby, you know? More old school hobby if that's what you're into. Some people are. I personally have no problem with either one. My son had a blast at both. Different days. You know, I purposely went to FanFest without a lot of card stuff so that he could do the league activations. He could see the sports stuff. He could run around and, and you know, have some fun and do the 40-yard dash and, and all that other fun stuff. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. It really is. As far as the second topic, I'll, I'll keep it kind of brief for you guys. The second topic is FanFest itself. There are more coming. And the question I'll pose to you is this. Let's just make the assumption that the next one is in November in Orlando. Just throw it out there, okay? One, can it be the same type of spectacle that this was? Did they unload the gun here? Did they leave nothing in the clip? Did they just fire all their bullets on this? Fire all your guns at once and... Did they do that? Right? Can the next one live up to the hype of this? Is Travis Scott going to be there doing an impromptu concert? Will they have Brady at every one of these and Derek Jeter and, um, you know, or is it kind of going to, I don't want to say dumbed down, but does it necessarily have to take a step down when it's not the first one and they're not looking to make the big splash? And more importantly, they had to have lost a ton of money. They had to have lost millions of dollars. I was not allowed in the 4040 club. You know, Michael Rubin sees some of the stuff that I post, doesn't see all of it, sees some of the stuff I post, but we're not this yet. I have not yet worn a white shirt or a white outfit for any of my episodes. I haven't been invited to the white party yet. I was not invited into the 4040 club. We'll take small steps. I don't have to go to the white party, but maybe the 4040 club next time. But I only bring it up because the cost of the 4040 club alone within Javits Center probably cost more than the entire East Coast National to set up. And you probably can add East Coast National, <laughs> Burbank Show, and a few other shows because, trust me, guys, that it was ridiculously expensive to set up in Javits. They do it by weight. You know what I mean? And they set up a club on the floor. It cost millions. It, it, I can only imagine how much money it cost them to set just that up. I didn't get an invite, but the point being, I don't know if even a company like Fanatics, with all the resources that they have, can go out and plan six of these for the next year in various locations, losing $20 million at a pop. I know they made money. Look, Hulk Hogan signed 300 bucks a pop, 1,000 autographs. Fanatics get some of that. Peyton Manning signed. I know they charged a lot for activations and, you know, some of the boots. And, you know, there's money that came in. They they sold their tops cards. They made some money on, on a lot of things. But this was – I would be shocked if they lost a little bit of money. <laughs> I'd be pretty certain that they lost a lot of money on this, which, you know – Sometimes you have to do that, right? I mean, Amazon lost money in the beginning too when they were trying to build something up. This was a monumental task. It was a heavy lift. There were a lot of famous people there. 
There were a lot of stars there. That doesn't just happen. There were a lot of people working. There were a lot of moving parts. And it's going to be difficult to keep doing that. It just is. And maybe they rein it in a little bit on the next one. And that becomes the question. Let's just use November 2nd in Orlando. And let's just say I can convince my wife that we should take our two kids for a nice long weekend to Orlando. I'm a Disney guy. You know me. I'm a you know, Disney shareholder, Disney credit card. Disney. I got Disney up the wazoo. I like Disney. If I can convince her to go to Orlando for the weekend, do my kids, my wife, or even myself take a day out of my vacation, out of my travel, to go to a fan fest that's probably a watered-down version of the New York one, instead of going to anything else that Orlando has, would I rather go to a fan fest than go to a Universal Studios and do Harry Potter and have some butterbeer? Or whatever it might be, roller coasters, you name it, right? And therein lies the fun little thing, right? People travel for the national. It's a once a year, you know, Mecca type event. Everybody in the space goes to it. The fan fest may turn out to be just a cool thing in your location that they have in certain locations. And if you're local, you head to it. Nothing wrong with that. I'm sure they can make that work. I don't know if they can do what they did in New York and have it just be a local thing and lose money. You know, they throw it in Orlando. Yeah, it's a good place to go, right? You can, you know, you can convince people to go to that. You name it. It's probably smart, easy to travel to. Lots of airfare, lots of hotels. It makes a lot of sense. But I don't know if people are traveling for that. I just don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I can envision the conversation I'd be having with my wife where she would say, we're going to go take vacation for three or four or five days, a nice long weekend. And one of those days, you're going to want to go and do baseball cards instead of going to Magic Kingdom with your family? I don't know. I mean, maybe. You know, maybe. Probably not. So I'm, listen, I had a blast, all right? I can only speak about the, the show I went to. I had a blast. But these are the things I think about going forward. I'm excited to see where it goes. And my hope is that the folks that run these things, some of whom I know pretty well, get together. Because I think, when we stop saying we're going to 10X the hobby, but we get closer to 10Xing, if you guys all realize that if you work together to make the pie, realize that that's a big damn pie. Enough slices in it for all of you and the rest of us to eat. The pie comes out better. Portnoy gives it a better score. This pie could be like a 9-2. It could be like a Connecticut tavern style, no flop kind of slice. But if we start fighting over it, Start scheduling things the same weekend, and you're fighting over it instead of working together, growing the thing. That would be sad. And there you go. That's part two. I got some stories from East Coast National that I want to give you as well. I'll do another episode on that. A little kid selling unlicensed cards to a dealer or trading. The deal are just erupting on. I'm causing a scene in the last hour of the show. It's a good story. And that'll be my cliffhanger. Talk to you guys soon. Take care, everybody.